build is targeted to developers, which by the way, uh, Microsoft now calls creators. Threw me a little bit because when I think of creators, I think uh, video, audio, and things like that. But for Microsoft speak, it is now creators. And you would expect uh, with Microsoft having, I'm gonna have to say it, the broadest developer tools and platforms out there, they obviously have uh, a lot to talk about. Uh, but two things I wanted to go in. So first off, uh, let's talk uh, uh, power. Uh, we saw the power platform with a lot of very big uh, announcements. And, and I want to focus in on one, which is, uh, so first of all, uh, uh, power is the uh, low code, no code uh, platform for Microsoft. If you want to go a lot of code, you go Visual Studio. And what they did is they had added a real language uh, capability to type in what you want to program. And based on uh, open a open AI's GPT-3, it automatically splits out code below. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And the cool part uh, is that not only that it works, but it's not proprietary, right? It's based on open AI. So if you get into it and you get hooked on it and you want to move off of Microsoft someday, uh, you can do that. And you're not just learning it for Microsoft. You're learning this for multiple uh, GPT-3 uh, in, uh, in environments. Uh, the other thing that I thought was, was really uh, interesting is uh, uh, Power added what's called a process uh, advisor. And this is a process mining uh, capability. What it does is it identifies repetitive activities uh, that take the most time across any organization, and then it actually recommends uh, what to automate and showing the organization and where a bottleneck exists. I mean, this is super cool, but I think macro, it just shows uh, power platform using AI in ways that you you might not uh, have, have understood or, or maybe not uh, uh, appreciated. And then I think uh, on the on the Azure side, uh, for me, the big thing that stuck out uh, was um, Azure adding a lot more uh, AI end-to-end uh, -end, uh, tools out there. That was one. Uh, and essentially showing customers, showing developers how to make SaaS apps uh, leveraging uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. And whether it's using the Azure communication services, uh, or other types of AI services. It allows you to build your own um, SaaS apps using their PaaS uh, services. Uh, there were a ton of announcements, Daniel, but I, I want to leave. I mean, there's so much oxygen left uh, in this room. I do want to add uh, one more Windows on ARM developer kit, uh, essentially um, letting a 64-bit ARM device in addition to a traditional or internal AMD uh, system um, uh, is a is a uh, expensive proposition uh, if you uh, ran into issues there. And Microsoft teamed up with Qualcomm and created this dev kit. It looks like a uh, an Apple TV, which is cool. Uh, a little mini uh, a mini PC for people to uh, uh, build those uh, applications. So whether it's low code, whether it's no code, whether it's a lot of code. Um, uh, Microsoft really uh, showed uh, developers uh, the way here. Impressive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Satya and Adela kicked it off with a pre-recorded keynote. I always appreciate the utilization of technology in the world of remote content, although I am excited to get back to live. It was always good to see him on the stage talking to us, telling us things for the first time. Uh, Pat, you did cover a lot of ground. I think the oxygen joke is like a theme on this show. You and I just have this propensity to going down the uh, well and then not coming back out until there's no water left. Um, but in all serious, I really thought a couple things caught my attention. You mentioned a few of them, the Dataverse and Synapse Link integration, uh, you know, really bringing low code to vast data for integration warehousing, real-time analytics, and, and basically making the, you know, you, heard, you mentioned the term, Pat, about uh, uh, creators. Well, I think what we're really saying is, you know, there was a time when you used to be a broadcast production, uh, you know, specialist and you knew how to wield a camera. And now creators are everybody with a phone. 
And I think they're kind of following that same path with developers. There was a time when everyone was pro code. You had to be pro code. You had to know how to code something. And now anybody that basically has a PC can be a programmer. So you are now a creator of applications. The other part that I uh, saw Microsoft really lean into uh, was the teams and the developer um, you know, ecosystem for teams. Uh, there's one more, uh, there's a broader Azure story. I'm going to write an op-ed about it. I'm not going to tease that here. I'll write the op-ed and then you'll have to go read it. So, but, um, you know, they, they added a few great features on Teams, shared stage integration, extensibility of the together mode, and uh, some improvements for uh, developers and developer collaboration. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the shared stage basically allows developers to create collaborative experiences such as whiteboards, uh, project boards, and put them within the meeting. I think that's important considering where we're going with hybrid work. We all heard about together mode. Look, we're sick of this type of video setup. No offense, I'm sure you all love looking at Pat and I, but imagine if you could put Pat and I somewhere cooler, not just a cool background, but you really started to create that immersive experience. We're really bridging AR and collaboration now, um, giving developers more flexibility to create common environments. What about creating a backdrop that makes you look like you're in the other half of the same room as the physical workers that you are going to be collaborating with in a hybrid work environment. And then finally, some updates to the toolkit for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code to basically allow developers to use less code, which by the way is thematic at Teams, uh, or sorry, across Microsoft, across uh, Build. You know, Nadella mentioned 100 updates for developers um, at the event, and 100 may not seem like a lot, but the theme as I see it is less code, low code, and no code so that you can spend your pro code resources doing those most important and most complex things. Yeah, well said, Daniel. And you add that to the power GitHub and Azure. And I have to agree. And, you know, as an analyst, you need to be very careful in your definitive phrases. But I do believe that Microsoft has the most comprehensive developer tools and, and cloud out there for, for developers uh, uh, right now. So. Uh, with that said, good job, Microsoft. It was really a uh, really good event. Uh, learned uh, a ton.